our second week of a series called Heartbeat, and it's all about worship. Because here's the thing. One thing I've realized about worship over the years is that it's kind of a nervous, I get nervous when I talk about worship. And I think that's because it's such a big thing. Like worship is such a big topic, it intimidates me, I don't want to get it wrong. And so in the past, I've avoided talking about it. But during this series, we're diving into it. I'm not going to be nervous or shy because I think that worship is not just a good thing we give to God. I think it's one of the most life-altering things that we can do as Christians. Yes, prayer is important. Yes, reading your Bible is important. But there's something about worship that gets us connected with God, that helps us put God in the right place, that helps us honor God and put him as number one. And when we do that, things in our life change. Uh, And this actually kind of goes right into the first point of today's little lesson, if you guys are following along in these little note cards. It's that worship is not just music. And this is going to be the thing that we have to keep in our minds for the rest of the lesson today, because I'm going to be talking a lot about this word worship. And when I say that word worship, I'm not talking about music. I'm not talking about us just singing. Worship is so much more than just singing. It's so much more than just a type of music. And for some of you guys, that might be an encouraging thing. Because maybe you guys are like me and you're not the best at singing. So you're like, how do I worship God when, my goodness, I sound like a dying cat whenever I try to sing? That's me. That's me right there. Or, or how, do I, how do I worship God when, when, you know what, worship music isn't my favorite style of music. Here's the thing you have to know. Worship is not just music. Here, here is really what worship is. And this is the next point. Worship is a combination of what you think about most what you love the most, and what you do the most. It's not just singing. It's not just 10 minutes of we go to church on Sunday and we sing and that's worship. No, worship is something you do every day. It's a mixture of what you think about most, what you love most, and what you do most. Those three things determine what you are worshiping. And here's the real thing. We are all worshiping something or or many things. Uh, God can be something that you worship, but also friendships can be something that you worship. Uh, Being in a social, like a certain social standing can be something you worship. A relationship can be something you worship. A hobby, an interest, something you enjoy can be something that you worship. Because what we worship is just whatever we think about most, whatever we love most, and whatever we do the most. And here's why us understanding what worship is is important. And this is right in the middle. I didn't even make it a point because I thought it was so important for you guys to know. We need to understand what worship is because what we worship can either help hold us together or it can let us down. And that's why worship's important. Whatever it is that we are worshiping, whatever it is that we are thinking about the most and, and loving the most and doing the most can either be something that helps hold our lives together and makes our lives worth it, takes care of who we are, or it can be something that over time lets us down, hurts us, burn us. I, I think some of you guys might know friends who maybe have worshipped a relationship before. I mean, you, you, let me just paint this picture. So you have a friend and all of a sudden there's a certain week and they come up to you and they're like, dude, she's my dream girl, man. I looked at her once across the room, and she looked back. We're in love. That's all it took. I knew from the moment, from the moment I saw her. We were like soulmates, dude. And then like one time in the hallway, I was like walking by, and I was like, and then she was like, and dude, it was like fireworks, just like everything. And then next week they come up, and your friend's like, she broke my heart. I'll never be the same. It's just my heart, it hurts. It's like I'm dying on the inside. And I think it's because that friend, that friend put a little bit too much thought, maybe a little bit too much, a little too much love, a little, maybe a little bit too much action into that relationship. It was something they were worshiping and it let them down. Maybe for some of you guys, it's, it's you're so good at something that that's what you worship. Maybe for some of you guys, it's a, it's a certain subject at school, or it's a certain talent. Maybe it is something like, like art or drawing, or it's that you, you, know, you have a good spot on your team, and you, you like that. It's not a bad thing, but, but you put so much weight into it. You're like, yeah, dude, I don't know if you realize this, but I can draw circles real good. 
I'm the best circle drawer in school. I draw all sorts of circles. I can draw this real, this real good. You know what? I'm like the best singer in my choir class. What's up? I always get asked to do the solos. Yeah. Just call me choir kid. That's, that's who I am. Well, what happens then when, when someone comes along who's better? And I know I've been there before where I thought, you know, I'm so good at this or I'm the best at that. And then someone comes along who can draw better than me or sing better than me. And all of a sudden I start getting, I hate that guy. That's the worst. Thinks he can draw circles better than me. What a, pff, that guy's so stupid. And then you go home and you're just like, man, I can't believe that. Like, I'm so bad. I thought I was so good at this. Everyone probably hates me and thinks I'm not good at anything. The reason that can hurt is because we put so much energy and effort into thinking this is what, this is what defines me. That's why us understanding what worship is is important. Because the things that we worship, they will either hold us together or let us down. And what I've seen in my life is that things that I've worshipped have let me down before, except for when I spend time worshiping God. I, I know I, I've given some weird examples of my own life, but I think uh, what confession. I find a certain amount of, uh, of guilty enjoyment in a certain type of YouTube video that usually every Christmas uh, gets posted. And I know that I shouldn't, but I just think they're hilarious. Uh, it's like YouTube videos of like kids getting prank Christmas gifts. Dude, something about them. I just... I find them hilarious. Like the most well-known one is the kid who's like, oh, an avocado, thanks. But, but that, that's hilarious. I know a really old one is the, uh, is the Nintendo 64 kid. I don't know if you guys even know about that one. But it's a kid who got such a good gift. He was like, his mind was blown. And I think, I, I think the reason I like these videos so much is because I, I see myself being like that. In, in my own life. I see myself doing that exact same thing. Hey, hey, dude, Mr. Valentine, shh. I see myself doing the same thing in my own life when I worship the wrong thing. When I, when I put too much value in the wrong thing, dude, I get just as whiny or complainy or upset when those things go wrong. I mean, okay, I think rather than explain this video, I'm going to go ahead and show it to you guys. But, but I mean, check out this video of, of these two brothers who get prank prank gifts for Christmas. I will pop it up here on the screen. This is probably, like I said, I shouldn't enjoy as much as I do, but it's just, it's just hilarious. Jace, do we have that one back there? I think it's like the, oh, here it is, over here. Oh no, it's so quiet. Is there any way we can play it off the projectors? What's up? We're going to play it off the projectors. There we go. Oh, now we're playing it off the Can we, can we play it off the projectors? I know you can see it on YouTube, but it's like really lagging behind on here. This video is too good to waste. Don't look at this. No one look. Close your eyes. Look away. Just kidding. Can we restart it? Hit that X. Let's restart it. Got to make sure we get the... Now, this kid, he asked for a 3DS for Christmas. That's the setup. And so he gets a... He gets a 3DS. And you can just, I know I shouldn't enjoy this as much as I do, but it just for some reason I find it so funny. Also, his, uh, his brother asked for a Mr. Potato Head and he got a potato. And now we're in full meltdown mode here. He's so upset that he didn't get this 3DS. But look at Potato Kid! Dude, Potato Kid's living his best life! And I don't know if you guys heard this, but 3DS Kid is looking at Potato Kid so happy, he's like, he got the best Christmas gift. You gave him the best gift, you gave me a terrible gift. This is so, this is so stupid, so bad, so unfair. And, and here's the thing. I'll laugh at these because you know that, like, if you're recording your kid getting a prank gift, like, you, you probably, they, he probably got a 3DS for Christmas. But I think the interesting thing is seeing how upset 3DS kid was and seeing how just pumped Potato Kid was. Like, Potato Kid got a potato and he's like, dude, mom, you're the best. Potato, 
my goodness, this is so awesome. And I think the reason was is because of really what these, now, now follow along, because of what these kids are worshiping. 3DS kid in his mind is like, dude, if I get that 3DS, my life will never be the same. Like, I, it's going to, the sun will be brighter. Everything will be more enjoyable. My life will go up to the next level when I get this 3DS. And when he doesn't get it, when it doesn't work out, it breaks him because in his mind, that was the thing that was going to make his life better. Potato Kid, he's like, dude, whatever. I'm just along for the ride. Like, I get a potato, cool. Life's still good. I, I get this thing, cool. Life's still good. I get, I get this, boom, awesome. That, it's not the most important thing to me, so I'm just able to enjoy whatever. In the same way in our lives, what we worship, what we look forward to, can have an effect on us when those things go wrong. And if, if we're putting all of our weight on how good we are at something, what happens when we get an injury or when something goes wrong? If we put all of our weight on a certain relationship or a certain groups of friends or a certain way we feel, what happens when those things don't go according to plan? We have to learn as Christians to, to worship, to think about, to love God most, because what, like the Bible says, he doesn't, he doesn't let us down. He doesn't. I, actually, the verse at the bottom of the, of the uh, pamphlet you guys have, Philippians 4, 4 through 9, I want us to look at this verse and acknowledge how insane this verse is. Like, I love the Bible. I believe every single part of it. But sometimes it says some ridiculous things. This is a, a pastor named Paul thousands of years ago. Says, this is something so important. I want people to know it for forever. And he writes, always, it starts off ridiculous. Always be filled with joy in the Lord. Always be filled with joy. I'll say it again. Be filled with joy. Be happy. Be excited. Let everyone see that you're gentle and kind. The Lord's coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Oh, oh there's another one. Verse 6. Don't worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything you need, always giving thanks for what you have. Right off the bat, two of the most ridiculous statements ever. Always be happy. Never be upset. Never be anxious. Never be, never be scared. Never be worried. In verse 6, never worry about anything. That's nuts. That does not sound like, like us today at all. I think, I think we, honestly, I've, I've read the studies before, studies from Harvard, studies from different universities that say that nowadays we are more stressed. You guys, as, as middle school students, are more stressed than adults were 10 years ago. And the Bible has the audacity to say, don't worry don't worry about what's going on at school. Don't worry about what's going on at home. Don't worry about your friend stuff. Don't worry about how you're feeling. Don't worry about your head. Don't worry about the fact you haven't slept in what feels like years. Don't worry. Are we, is this book aware of what's going on in the world today? And I think, well, let's continue on. If, he's, if, if, if Paul is going to write such ridiculous things, let's, let's see what he has to say. What, what he has to say. I can't talk today, but don't worry about it. He says in verse 7, And because you belong to Christ Jesus, God's peace will stand guard over your thoughts and your feelings. His peace can do this far better than our own human minds can. Brothers and sisters, continue to think about what is good and worthy of praise. Think about what is beautiful and respected. And do what you learned and received from me. See, see Paul says the reason we can be happy, the reason we can always have joy, the reason we can live without worry is only because we understand what verse 7 says. We understand that Jesus, that we belong to Jesus, he's going to take care of us, and that he, that God is going to stand guard over our thoughts, our feelings, and our lives. Paul's not just saying, be happy, don't worry about it. Uh, pretend those things don't exist. Uh, even though you, you hurt so much on the inside, put a smile on your face. I think sometimes that's what people think Christians are supposed to be like. That like, even though we are so pained on the inside, that we're supposed to pretend that everything's okay. But no, Paul says, don't worry about anything because we should be praying about everything. We should be trusting God with everything. 
Don't, don't spend so much time thinking and loving and worrying about everything else. Spend that time thinking and loving and giving thoughts and giving your time to God because he's going to take care of you. Man, I could spend so much time just on this Philippians verse. I mean, verse 7 saying the reason we worship God is because of how good he is, that his peace will guard over us, that, 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 he, that he's going to take care of our thoughts and our feelings. Verse 6 saying don't worry but pray because God knows what you need and will help us. Man, I think for so many of us, what would help our lives be so much easier is understanding that God deserves our worship, our thoughts, our energy, our effort, because he can actually take care of us better than these other things we could worship ever could. And, and here's, I'm trying to think where I'm going with this, because this lesson's going way different than it did last night. And I think, honestly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up and challenge you guys with this. Usually my lessons have a real easy, like, one, two, three, here's what you should do to change your life this week, everybody. Uh, but this week, it's a little bit different. This week, my, my encouragement to you guys is, is now that you understand what worship is, that's not just singing. It's what you think about. It, it's, what, it's what you love most. It's what you do most. And now that you understand that what, what you worship really determines what can hold your life together, my challenge for you guys this week is ask yourself honestly, do I just say, say that I love God? Do I just say that, that, that I follow him? Or am I actually spending time worshiping him? Once, once the singing at church is over, do I worship God at home? Do I think about him throughout the week? Do I, do I, do I, do I spend time just thanking him like Philippians says throughout the week? Do I, do I read my Bible? Because that's what real worship is. It's not what you do in this room, it's what you do outside this room. And my challenge to you guys is spend time this week worshiping God. Not because he's holding you down saying, you better worship me. Or if you don't even worship me, you better, lightning, pff, meteor, pff, I'll get you. No, worship God because he says, I want to help, I want to help hold your life together. I want to help guard, guard your mind and, and give you peace and answer the things you're worried about. And instead of you thinking that this certain relationship could fix you or this certain friend group or this certain, this certain hobby or interest, instead spend that time and, and give it to me and see what I can do. Let, let's not let our lives keep falling apart like poor 3DS kid who didn't get the one thing he thought would fix his life and his life went to shambles. Let's learn to, to trust God and to worship him, knowing that he will take care of us when we do.